Welcome back to another episode of STLT. Today is a special episode for several reasons, and it kind of feels like we are moving towards the end of an era, getting ourselves ready for the next chapter, the next level in life. Not only are we headed for the exit of the Met today, leaving the place that we called our home for the past one and a half years behind, a place that changed our lives and us as people for good, but we are also celebrating the big 1-0 today. That's right, 10 years. A decade long, we have been roaming this earth together. We spent endless hours in trains to visit each other, had our fair share of emotional goodbyes in airports for eight lifetimes, lived in five countries, decided that owning a car was not worth the money, but bought a sailboat instead, and now sailed straight across the Met, logging 5,000 nautical miles in one and a half years. So let's start this memorable day and hope it's gonna be as epic as the past 10 years. This must be the worst sail we've ever had. This here is the harbor of Bena Madina, a cute looking marina somewhere on the south coast of Spain. This place kind of reminds me of a little Disneyland with the apartment islands in the funny shapes and the boats neatly docked around it. It somehow has this theme park vibe. We're almost there and I'm loving driving in Spain. <laughs> it's so good. We just spent a couple of days chilling out in the pool house of Andrew and Hiba, who kindly invited us into their home to enjoy some land time. They have this lovely house a short drive outside of Bena Madena, and thanks to them we had a few really relaxed days chilling by the pool and some blissful nights in a big square bed with aircon. But maybe the best part of all was that they provided us with a laundry machine. So we could finally get rid of those seven weeks of accumulated laundry. It really are those little things that can make your day. This little boat life timeout has given us renewed energy to tackle our next challenge though. Getting on board without falling between shore and ship and hoisting the sails for our last leg in the Mediterranean Sea. Tricky one. Yeah. We're back people. <laughs> Oh, I remember that sound. Yeah, but now it will just be once, I hope. It's been a good few days. It's really fun with Hiba, Andrew and uh, Arthur. We kind of recharged our batteries, slash we're still tired anyway. Yeah. So we are uh, going to go to Jib now. Have a good day sail. Oh, wow, that's actually a lot of fun. Every desert, we come back again. We could go any distance to chase down every dream. We could reach all the stars, but in the Start end, the engine by pushing that button. I know a place where we can go. Oh, that's the Spanish coast is really like filled with buoys everywhere and they're often absolutely perpendicular to the coast and they go out really far and you mostly have to completely go around them and I think that's it's quite stupid because it's really dangerous it's it's like in everybody's driveway so we were just thinking well it can't really be that you have to go all the way around it it's really long but then the fishing boat just came up to us and they uh, started like pointing that way telling us to go towards land and there is one red buoy and the rest is white so I guess the red buoy with the flag is the last one 
and they just told us to go around that. So that's also one of the things you have to keep in mind, especially ships that are fishing, you have to evade these. So they don't have to go around you, not even when you are sailing. They always go first because they're busy and they're business fishing ships. Pay attention to that and make sure you don't get stuck in any fishing nets because that will give you a lot of trouble. Should've known you'd leave me when credits roll on my own. Wait! On my own. Wait! Wait! Yay! This must be the worst sail we've ever had since we got the boat. We have over a meter of very steep short waves on our beam which we can't change at all like none of the course change will make a difference and then we have about 10 knots of wind from behind 12 maybe which is not enough to get us sailing so we managed to fix a new setup that we've never tried before where we use the boom of the mainsail as a pole to keep the Genoa out because with this insane waves we're doing it would just flap over to the other side all the time because the wind's not strong enough to keep it out and even like this the Genoa is flapping and with 10 knots of apparent in the Genoa and the engine on two, almost two and a half thousand revs we are doing 3.1 knots so it's terrible which means that we will take another what 15 hours and we've been on the way for six we thought we would take 12 so <laughs> this is really fun we were a bit stupid thinking that we'd have a constable sail with 12 knots downwind in well over a meter waves and now we have to just get through it We checked out some marinas here down the coast and we could go, but it's not all suck. The marinas are not great. We're pretty far off the coast, so we have to make a huge detour, you know, to get there. And then tomorrow morning, the weather is going to be the same and I'm not feeling great. Alex is really sweet and he tries to make me food, but he comes with like dry breads and peanut butter, which <laughs> doesn't help. It was a really nice gesture. Happy 10 year anniversary. Exactly. I think we underestimated the effort it takes to jive when, when you're on a downwind course and you have this setup as we have now. Because we have like two preventers, like one port and one starboard. And we need to switch the Genoa sheet. It's going through a block on the boom. And when we jive, we need, just need to take that off and then put the other one on. We're and jive. at the same time, we need to then switch preventers. And at the same time, we don't have enough blocks so our one preventer is not working, so we need to then switch a block, go forward, and then get all the lines back together. And of course you twist them, and then you need to take them off again. So it took us Twice. about like, maybe half an hour to just drive with this downwind setup. So it's good that we test it, because it's not good yet. It's not the best way. Why are you so happy? We just realized we made it over the halfway point. We're actually only, we're down 28 miles and we got 21 and a half to go. <laughs> the crossing of the small man. Yeah, at three and a half knots, we will arrive ooh, at three instead of five. We've been doing better. Like we're increasing our speeds. Oh, oh. This is good. Pretty crazy ride. I mean, sometimes we get picked up by a wave, and I can just we just get lifted. Like it feels like we're three meters above the ocean when we do that. It's so cool. The waves are now coming from a way better angle than they did a couple hours ago. So uh, 
Funny. Right, we're speeding up speed. I just turned down the engine a bit. I mean, we went from 3.5 to 3.8. It's not the worst sale of the season, it's actually quite nice. <laughs> it's me who says that. How about that? It's actually just a bit swelly. A bit. And and choppy. The the waves are a bit steeper than usual because there's always a bit of current flowing into the med. And it's a spring tide. So we kinda didn't check that and we were just happy that we had a full moon so we could see at night. But that also means that the currents and the tides are stronger than usual. And this is why we are incredibly slow. Anyways, we can see Gibraltar now. The rock is right over there. And it's gonna take us another five hours, I guess. So that means we arrive just after midnight. We heard that the entry is really simple. You just have to call in on the VTS channel and announce that you're there and you're gonna transit into the bay. And in the bay, there's a uh, big cargo anchorage that you have to navigate through. But uh, I guess that's gonna be easy peasy. So now I'm just gonna enjoy the sunset and lie in my comfortable pillows. Because as soon as you're in a comfortable cockpit, it's actually really bearable. We didn't really do bigger passages last year, so we didn't really bother about comfort in the cockpit. And it's also a game changer when you're sailing. It's just comfortable steering. That's it. That's what makes sailing fun. Good to have you back. Thanks. Good to be here. What did you do? We left the sail back open because we thought we'd get the main up at one point in this sail, which was naive. But then the reefing lines just fell out of the lazy bag. So I just pulled in the reef and it was stuck. So I had to go to the mast. But now it's gone. Also, and the sun is gone too. Yeah, I know it goes quick. You missed the sunset. No, I filmed it. Okay. Yeah, the lazy bag, the lines are just too soft, too like rough. The main sail was like half hanging out, we had to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing some dirty sailing, huh? Yep. Some days are what they are, bearable at best. And even though this might look like a fantastic sail on camera, the reality was pretty different. But maybe with everything that is going on in the world right now, a bad sail is not the worst thing that can happen to you. And in hindsight, we are forever grateful that we were able to experience the kind of freedom that many others don't have right now. We hope that this video makes your day a bit better if you can't have the freedom that you deserve. So I guess that whether a moment is good or bad depends completely on your perspective. Besides that, even your worst day will have some beautiful moments in it. And if you try to look for the pretty things that happen around you, you might even look back on a crappy day with a smile. When Alex and I first met, there is no way I could have guessed we would be spending our 10 year anniversary on a sailboat. Just the two of us out on the wavy waters of the Med, watching the sunset from our very own cockpit. That must be the most romantic way we could have possibly celebrated such a moment. And even though I damn well know that most of the sale was horrifying, the good thing about the human mind is that memories are a matter of mere seconds. So the memory of a 15 hour bad sale is just one memory. On the other hand, I can find at least five beautiful moments on that same sale, which makes for five good memories. And that's five against one. So there you have it. If you see the little things in life, happiness is only a memory away. And if there really is no way to salvage your day, well, that's why we have chocolate. What I kind of forgot-ish, this is actually the last sail we have in the Mediterranean. Plus, 
It's the last couple of hours of our 10th anniversary. So we got some uh, very fancy truffle desserts to celebrate all these special moments. Aww. There you go, Snoop. Oh, thank you. Yeah, what's happening? The sun has gone down. As you can see, I'm cold. I'm wrapped in blankets and sweaters. It's gotten a bit more wavy, I think. We also pulled in the Genoa because it was flapping like crazy and was just... I was afraid actually the boom might break because of the enormous bangs he kept giving on it. So uh, now we're motoring and we have a pretty cool view of the Gibraltar rock. We have a full moon behind us. On land side we have lights and it's still a sunset-ish setting so everything's looking pretty cool but it stays extremely bouncy i'm trying to uh, get into that and just accept it bts Trivata, this is sailing that's on the Dropping in La Linea, and he's attaching this number. That was a frogger. I haven't seen that before. You done? Yeah. All right. Now that we have arrived, I decided to make some dinner because I'm so hungry. And we have this new cool toy here called the Delta Echo Flow. When this video comes out, we probably already did a video about that. But in case you haven't seen it, it's like a massive lithium battery with an inverter and everything in it. And I just hooked up our water boiler so I can have hot water within, what, one and a half minutes instead of 15 minutes of gas. So that is very exciting and I'm so happy with that toy <laughs> slash tool slash gadget. It's awesome. <laughs> Here's your food. Are you tired? Thanks. I'm very tired. Yeah. It is, uh, it's 2.30. That was tough. It was, a, it was a pretty tough ride, huh? Mm. It wasn't the longest one, but it was the most challenging, like, brain-wise, I think. Maybe. We not, didn't even sail, you know, it wasn't even... We couldn't turn up the engine for like a second. I think that's what made it so exhausting. Mm because it was really wavy. We tried to sail and it didn't work. And it just got worse and we got slower and slower. <laughs> and then it ended with all these cargo ships coming in here. Well, I was surprised we had a prediction of like current going against us in the end. And I wasn't looking forward to that because no. that would have meant like three knots of speed over ground. Somehow we had five, five and a half, even six. So that's twice yeah. that speed. We haven't done six since we well, since we came back. Yeah, since we came back. I managed that, so. So that was really lucky. I yeah. don't know why that it was different than on the on the forecast. All these cargo ships and tankers and yeah. that was ridiculous. They came from every side and they were anchoring all around us and we're like really slow and don't know where to go. <laughs> yeah, you know, we were waiting for one to, to anchor because they're just driving in front of us. There were these pilot boats that just zizz around everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we just took it really slow and went around in circles in front of the cape. But then we realized that we just have to go because the next one was already in line. So eventually you just have to make your way out of there. And it's pretty big in here. I mean, it's like five miles. So it takes you an hour to get from yeah. the inside all the way here. So and then we hu basically hugged the breakwater. That's weird because it's dark and you can't estimate anything. And then all of a sudden you see the breakwater really clearly and the birds sitting on it. And then, you know, you're pretty close. And then you still go with five knots because behind you, like, there's the ferry and it starts pointing the spotlights at you. <laughs> <laughs> but turned out it was just 
communicating with the pilot boat that was in front of us so that was good i was not meant for us but we were like freaking out for a sec we're like oh my god it's coming close and now it's putting us in the spotlight like what we have to leave where do we go <laughs> but we're tough fun we anchored the swells coming from the stern and the wind from the bow yeah. so i think we'll have a nice and quiet night's sleep and then we'll check out the anchorage tomorrow morning and realize everything's fine yeah <laughs> as always yeah there's so, no drama here no drama no but it was really uncomfortable it was a pretty shitty ride i liked it yeah well anyway we're gonna finish our uh, late night dinner and then just head to bed so thanks for watching see you next time bye guys i've noticed that many of you forgot to hit that thumbs up button last week what happened you feel a bit better than this morning so smash it extra hard this time and tune in next week for some gibraltar exploration Oh, and soon we will also be starting a very exciting new boat project. Can you guess what this is going to be? Oh, are you through? Ah! Hit subscribe <laughs> if you don't want to miss out.